the engine is based on a 350 Chev. It's actually 410 cubic inches, fuel injected. They produce around 900 horsepower, 750 foot-pounds of torque. Titanium disc brakes, mainly on the left side to keep the car turning. And of course, we run on Hoosier tyres. The cars have been built similar to what they are right now since in the early 80s. The Maxim car has a bigger window of opportunity to get it right than some of the other cars, but they are generally a very equal class of cars. We all got to run to a certain weight. Horsepower is unlimited, but you can't use much more than 900 horsepower. It's quite a bit. What keeps me a sprint car is pretty much is the fact that the power to weight ratio, it's more than an F1 car. And if you jump on the throttle really hard, you can turn it over backwards. Basically, your nerves start about four hours before you get to an event. The adrenaline, I think, starts kicking in the moment you get in the truck to go to the racetrack. Once you're in, you uh, grab the steering wheel. It's got a quick release hub right here. Just pulls up and drops on. Bang, locked on, ready to go. That's full lock one side. It's full lock the other. So we've got two thirds of a turn lock to lock. Forward or back on the wing slider and the rest of it's stomp and steer. You can see the actual shape of it through the rivets on the side here. It's actually a very similar shape to uh, the shape of a, an aircraft wing but we run it upside down, high pressure on the top, low pressure underneath, creating a lot of downforce. Piss and dribble fuel injection system, for the want of a better word, that's how it runs. It's just like an old Hillborn fuel injector. It's, this is actually a Kinsler. Basically here we have our left and right rear tyres. That's the right rear, which is noticeably bigger than the left rear. The tyres are our tyre of choice, Hoosier tyres, made in the USA. Fitted onto our own manufactured wheels generally go through a right rear per race meeting. If the track's bad, you could use up to 10, 12 tyres in a day. We basically do rolling starts on every event. Push truck comes up, hits you from behind, then dunk, 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 all the way you're going. You've got to run the throttle as hard as you can for as long as you can. You might feather the throttle through the corner to get the rear end to stay where you want it. You want it to just be drifting enough to get the front around to be pointing down the straightaway. And if you're not pointing where you want to go, the front end gets light and it drags you off the track. Running in the first turn is generally the make or break of a heat race. You've got to approach that first turn do or die because what happens in that first turn generally carries you through that race. If you don't pass one or two or three cars or hold your position at least, once you all get running, it's very hard to get going in a short race. You have push trucks out there for probably two hours prior, packing down this slushy, muddy substance to make it a tacky, grippy, racy surface. If you're an early car, the track's just right, but if you get a late number, it's starting to go away. So times will drop off possibly by half a second. When you're chasing someone down, you're pretty well looking for their weakest point. A leader hasn't the ability to move around on the track and find a better line. These wheels are so big and soft that you touch wheels with another car, you're going to ride a wheel, you're going to go in the air. Sometimes you're just wondering when that last thud's going to be. You're in the air or you don't know where you are and it's, it's been boom, boom, boom. And it's quiet, go, oh shit, what's coming? There's quite a bit of camaraderie between the sprint car competitors, but generally once you get on the racetrack, it's dog-eat-dog, -dog, like, I want that spot and I'm gonna take it.